But I'm gonna go pick broccoli right now, so we ought to go over there and I can give you a lesson on broccoli. Zoom in on this. I'm zooming in. But I'm gonna cut this broccoli at an angle. Okay? If you cut it straight, like say you cut it like this, you'd leave a flat stump. This stump has got an angle on it. So dew and uh, rainfall will not collect on the flat stump. If it does, it provides an excellent location for bacteria to prosper and it will make a small puddle of, for lack of a better word, pus. And it will quickly degenerate the uh, stem going down into the plant and it will make a puddle of decay that puts off a scent that will attract every uh, disease spreading insect you can imagine. And they'll all come over for a taste and then spread this mucus throughout your garden. And uh, the plant will eventually die and put off a smell that resembles that of a dead animal. So to avoid that, all you gotta do is cut it at an angle. That's all you gotta do. And all your broccoli plants will survive and prosper. There's two kinds of broccoli plants. There's a kind of broccoli plant that pumps out a gigantic head of broccoli. Something about, this is three inches across. It would pump out something about nine or 10 inches across. But it's only a one harvest uh, unit. And it's ideal for the uh, you know guys that sell broccoli to grocery stores. They want big heads, they want them to be uniform, and uh, once they harvest, they just till it under. They pull it out and they, they get rid of it. The kind of broccoli we have, there's another one of our buddies just hanging on the broccoli plant, enjoying the delicious oh, broccoli. Oh, and look, here's one of our, here's a couple of our buddies. These are cabbage And worms. that's how we control insects, we just pick them off. We've got our spider buddies and our wasp, and, all these other guys. This is a dead leaf. With organic gardening, the most important thing is sanitation. You can't leave waste material laying around in your garden. You got to get it out. Minimum tillage, that's agronomy. That's uh, growing of row crops on a large scale. Grains mostly. Well, they're using chemicals. Not all of them. Most of them. <laughs> and minimum till can work good for soybeans because uh, they don't have a lot of insect problems. But when you leave decaying material around your plants, in most cases it provides refuge for the insects that are doing the damage. So. As the materials decay, Plants, uh, bugs that land on these plants spread disease. Like the simple act of leaving a corn cob laying in a garden can bring a lot of flies. Just common flies, they'll land on that corn cob and then they'll land on your plants and spread disease. The only way to keep the flies out of your garden is to keep the decaying material that they enjoy out of the garden. It's, it's kind of like having a big uh, a dumpster or a garbage can in the middle of your uh, your kitchen. You know, you really don't want a bunch of flies landing on your meal. Uh, you know, eating dinner with you. Not a good thing. And that's why you have compost. That's why you have a compost pile. Okay, earlier I was talking about the two kinds of broccoli plants. You've got the big ones that the uh, big uh, growers use, and they're a one well, I heard it on Fox News. Uh, harvest item. These, the 
flavor intensive, but they put out a lot more broccoli. They initially put out one great big head. It's not as big as the uh, one head uh, broccoli varieties, but it continues to put out. Hey, kitty, get out of here. Go on. I can't seem to understand. Well, the kitty eats a few moles. Once in a while. We like that, but we don't like the kitty uh, getting in the garden any more than we want, uh, you know, a dog or any other livestock wandering around the garden. It's not healthy. Cats poop and they pee and they they carry disease around just like everybody else. So having a bunch of cats around is a it's a negative. And they also kill all the birds. And, you know. But once again, I want to remind everybody, cut this stuff, cut this broccoli on an angle, okay? And, uh, and grow this kind of broccoli, because most, most home gardeners, you know, they don't want a gigantic harvest all at once. They don't mind going out and picking smaller pieces of broccoli uh, over and over and over again. We pick broccoli off these plants now for about three months and we'll get another three months off of them we will broccoli or this kind of broccoli is like a 180 day plant so it will continue to give us a harvest hopefully into november because broccoli are pretty uh, cold hardy plants they can take uh, I've seen icicles hanging off of broccoli plants, and by uh, you know a couple days later, I'm cutting broccoli off. So. And probably the most important thing, besides how to cut broccoli, is where you plant broccoli. What we've got here is we've got broccoli that get a lot of east sun, but in the afternoon, they're in the uh, they're in the shade. And that keeps them from larping out like that, uh, that one plant. Now this one has a weird little bug in it. But I can't identify. But anyway, you gotta get out and prop and pick your broccoli. Right there is something that we must do. Or it'll larp it's out and then you're gonna have to cut it way back. And wait quite a while to get another broccoli done. So some of these little broccolis are developed during a hot day, and they usually don't end up being much. Gets up around 90 degrees, and broccoli generally doesn't uh, it doesn't head. It just flowers because. This is a uh, lettuce bed that I seeded at 4.30 in the morning without benefit of any light. And I just, uh, because a big storm was coming in, I saw it on the radar. For some reason I woke up 4.30 in the morning, turned on the weather channel and saw a storm that eventually dumped more than an inch of rain on our very dry garden. So. I knew that we'd taken some cauliflower out of here. You see these cauliflower, they're a little immature. There's a pretty couple in, over here. But I just peeled back the row cover. And oh yeah, take a look at this cauliflower right here. This is a self-blanching cauliflower, which means the leaves wrap itself up around the cauliflower and make it difficult for the white cabbage butterflies to locate the uh, fruit. And uh, it also keeps the plant from getting sunburned and stained. And the cage helps a little bit too. 